The electrical adventure continues with some of the interior work for solar controls and uh, actually my high power, high voltage stuff too. So most of the control panels are going to mount on this section right behind me here. I don't have an awful lot of room. So the second thing that I need to do is make some working room. The first thing that I need to do, I know you're going to love this. Everybody loves a good unboxing video. So first comes the unboxing. Now, to be able to make some room, I think what I'll do is I have already purchased four of the uh, 48 volt, 100 amp hour uh, batteries. And the quickest way to make some room is to go ahead, mount them in their cabinet. And this is on wheels. So then I can move it around to get it out of my way. Eventually, it'll sit back against this wall nearly in the position that it's in now. Looks like uh, Gabby's doing a little exploring. We'll get started on this in a minute. certainly not capable of what I once was, especially when it comes to weight. These batteries are expensive enough and heavy enough that I've asked my tractor for a little help. in the rack. I'm not going to mount them and hook up power uh, until later. I really want to get started on uh, some of the work on the walls first. And I'll probably have a day just in doing that. It's getting late in the day. I've got the tractor lights on just to be able to have some amount of light in here. Um, but it's been cloudy all day and this is really about as light as it's been anyway. I'll go ahead and uh, move the camera over and take a look at what we've got. Okay, well, like I said, they're all set in place. Um, I'll pull them out a little bit and mount them all to the track so they can't move around. They included, um, they included conductors for hooking them up, positive and negative, and at first I thought, why on earth are they so on small? And that was before I first opened this cabinet and realized that there is one heck of a heavy copper bus bar running down each side. So... All it takes really is this and that, essentially. And then uh, the cables coming out of here will be a 4 aught cable, and I'll probably run the negative side all the way down near the bottom here and connect it in there, and then the positive side up near the top. And that should give as even a distribution on the power as possible. When you charge batteries, not so much lithium batteries like you would with a wet cell battery, but there's resistance in the battery, so it's going to flow through the battery, not at the speed of light, certainly, but uh, somewhat slowly. So you want, if we were to hook both up up here, this one would discharge first and charge first, and so on down the line to where the bottom one wouldn't get nearly as much use, and it wouldn't charge back as quickly. So by hooking one up here and one down there, that takes care of that problem, or at least as much as possible. So that's how I'll be hooking it up when I hook it up. You can join me for that. Um, next step, next step is probably go ahead and get some rest, call it a day, clean up my trash, and then tomorrow be in here and starting some of the work on the walls. Good morning to you. It's a bit chilly here in Arkansas, but uh, not too bad. At least I'm inside out of the wind. 
I have uh, already started on setting some of my control equipment, uh, the EG4 controllers, um, and we'll take a look at this in just a moment, and then also behind me the uh, electrical panel that will service the building. With the EG4 converters all in one, um, there's really no reason for those to be mounted all that low. They say to mount them at eye height, but there's nothing that is user serviceable from here up, so why waste that space and have it any lower when I really could use the additional space for wiring and such below it. So that's the height that I mounted the EG4s at. It also made it to where I could turn in a uh, solid PVC conduit into the side of my service panel. In here, where the batteries will are hooked up, uh, it's required to have a disconnect on these batteries. Um, and with these batteries, I've got a four gauge cable coming into this and then a four aught gauge cable coming into it, two aught gauge cable going out to each inverter. These were kind of a bear to make up. And most of the other DIYers that I've seen have not enclosed this in a box. And legally, I don't know that it's required or not. Um, under 50 volts, I think, is considered low voltage, and I really haven't checked into the code that much on low voltage wiring. But the one thing that when this is charging, a fully charged battery is going to be at 51.2 volts, so we're over that 50 volt limit. So to me, this should be enclosed. And if we've got any electricians or electrical engineers out there, I'd really appreciate your comments as into whether that should be the case or not. So anyway, I didn't want anyone to be able to fall across this panel when it's live and short themselves between the positive and the negative. So what I did is I went and put in my uh, terminal block for the positive inside this cabinet and also the uh, disconnect breakers. Uh, these are each 200 amp disconnects or each 200 amp breakers. They're actually mounted upside down because the line side comes in here, the load side goes out there and they're really only made for uh, uh, one way travel. Although I guess when they're charging, the travel is the opposite direction. But anyway, I've got these breakers mounted. Um, and everything then is in an enclosed cabinet and it's keyed um, with just a simple little key and I'll leave that probably just tied off here in case the fire department or me or anyone else ever needs to come in to disconnect it. The negative side I did leave out in the open because you would have to, con in order to get shock, you would have to have continuous contact between the two of them which now you don't have and they're there's not a lot of conductor sticking out for you even, to even be able to touch on this one. Haven't hooked up the batteries, just got the battery cable set off to the side. The battery cabinet will sit right here, which would still be in my way for being able to do anything. But now I am ready to go ahead and finish wiring everything else in. You saw me pull in all the wire from the solar panels, so uh, one of those panels will be hooked up here. The other set of panels will be hooked up here. And then my uh, high voltage output wiring, 125 volt output will come from here through the conduit into the panel on each side. Uh, they'll be phased to where I have 120 volts coming in here, 120 volts coming in there, and then 240 to 250 volts I can combine in this breaker panel and have uh, be able to have a 240 volt split phase power, which is what I am after. Um, I'd like to be able to use that for a mini split that I end up putting in upside or upstairs. I have a table saw that will run off of, I think it's a 30 amp rated table saw at 240 volts that I'd like to be able to use for that too. So I do have a couple of uses for the 240 volt circuit. Uh, my air compressor may even run off of a, a 240 volt circuit. I don't know. I don't remember. Anyway, that's what I've got. Now it's time to go ahead and wire these. Um, and I'll go ahead and move the camera back so you can see. But from the uh, junction box down here where the solar comes out up to there, I'll run flex conduit to those. I've got a ground wire 
that I will just mount directly to this concrete wall over to the service panel and then bond it on the, uh, on the bonding bar on the side here. Okay, I have uh, the wires that I pulled into the conduit below through the junction box, through flex conduit now, uh, fr from the junction box to the disconnect and from the disconnect then up to the hookup in the all-in-one. And I have already checked for continuity with an ohm meter between the red there, the red here, black here, and such and so forth, and that's all good. I tried the operation of the disconnect, and it works as a disconnect. It's a fused disconnect, so there's no way of knowing if the, or not fused, but uh, a disconnect breaker. There's no way of uh, knowing if that's working until I got power on it. So, so far, so good. Battery's hooked up. The PV arrays are hooked up. I guess the next thing that I have is pulling the high voltage wire from here into the panel. I now have everything hooked up. I've already run the system. I got four of the uh, 48 volt, 100 amp hour batteries. So a total of 20 kilowatts of energy in there, one there fully charged. Um, I have started and tried the um, solar panels to make sure that they are actually charging the batteries and they are through the, in, uh, through the inverter chargers. <clears throat> I've come in here, <clears throat> excuse me, with the inverter on and tested the voltage here. I've got 120 volts from one leg to neutral, 120 volts from the other leg to neutral, and 240 volts between them. So that's working properly. I have done a firmware upgrade on the EG4 inverters. Something that seems to be inherent, an inherent problem with them is a, in the display, we will show an error message 61. And what that is, is a lack of communication between these and these. And I have done a firmware upgrade both to the monitor and to the inverter on both cabinets, and I'm still getting that error message 61. So I'm waiting on Signature Solar to give me a call back and see if they can help me through that. It was really a pretty easy matter to install that new firmware. You just plug in here, plug into your computer, download the new files and transfer them over. Um, it took about 15 minutes for each unit to be updated. Let's fire it up and see what happens. I'll turn on the batteries first. and wait to make sure that those are working properly. And they are. Then I'll turn on the inverters, and I've got these set up to work together in order to get the two-phase power, so they need to be turned on relatively at the same time. And it takes about 10 seconds for them to start their operation. And after that irritating sound goes out, we should have now power going to my panel. I've got the voltmeter set up there uh, on the uh, AC volts measurement. We'll check it here and we have 120 volts. Check the other leg. We have 120 volts. And from leg to leg, we have 241 volts. So that is all working properly. And something that I think is just really cool is I plug something into the wall and that sure beats listening to a doggone generator, although those inverters do make some noise. I think I have one more thing to show you that I haven't quite got ready yet, and then we'll end this episode with that. I had one thing left to do, and that is to put up a sign. The NEC requires that anything that is served by a solar system 
needs to have it conspicuously marked to where the disconnects are on the system. That is for emergency personnel if they need to get in so that they don't get shocked trying to save our place or save us. And uh, I can see where that's pretty doggone important. I had some signs made up, but I must have forgotten them in Colorado because I've looked all over for them and I just can't find them. I will end the episode here saying thanks. I'll see you on the next one. Like and subscribe. Goodbye.